you record a podcast. Record a podcast. Hello and welcome to Filterless, a podcast. We're talking about Star Wars today. Yeah, we're back. That's Mark. I'm Brandon. Yeah, we should. I, I should have done that. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's been a while. Yeah. Um, we had technical difficulties in which a setting on our camera got changed, and we didn't know it. Let alone just time. Yeah. Life. We just didn't. I mean, like, and, and, we've been so swamped yeah. that we couldn't even we, find the time to find a setting that was wrong right. with our camera. <laughs> We thought it was just broken and that we were going to have to get a new one, and, yeah. and then we didn't. So we're back now. I figured um, it was a software problem, but that has nothing to do with Star Wars. Right. So, uh, yeah, last episode we said we were going to do a Marvel episode, which we did record, but then our camera was weird. Yeah, so um, we never posted it. So now we're going to do Star Wars instead because we want to. Yeah, because we like Star Wars. Yeah, so we'll um, do Marvel later. Sometime. <laughs> That's gonna be like our giant. Or that's gonna be our uh, our story arc. Yeah. <laughs> so like eventually we do a Marvel episode. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't want to do it now. Guardians of the Galaxy comes out next weekend. Yeah, it's true. So on May the fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Should be Star Wars. Yeah. Um. It's weird. Yeah. Cause like I'm gonna probably go see it on May the fourth. I'm gonna try, but you know, yeah. work and. That's a Thursday. Usually I have. Oh yeah. D and D. I have D and D on Thursdays. You could skip that. And go see Space D&D. <laughs> Anyways, hey, we're going to talk about Star Wars. Yeah, um, so we're just going to jump in. Uh, they announced at the Star Wars Celebration, I think it's two weeks ago now, um, Star Wars Forces of Destiny, which is a series of animated shorts uh, focusing solely on the female characters of Star Wars. Um, so as a man, I hate it. Yeah. Mm, no, as, angry. as a man and a fan, I'm a little confused. Like, I understand they're, uh, they're, they've got a lot of slack in the past for, like, the Force Awakens toy line came out and they had, like, a box set of all the main characters, but it was missing Rey, who is arguably the actual main character. Yeah. And it just had all the male characters. Um... When they've had, pro- I mean, in the past in general, it was just kind of like, uh, if you want to go back to the original four through six, mm-hmm. you know, with the Leia was like there. The and, only woman in the galaxy. Yeah, which yeah. she was portrayed as a strong character, but mm-hmm. then they also had like the swimsuit scene and yeah. stuff like that. Like, it was just. Because like, it was still made in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it just, yeah. And uh, as much as we. Like, I, I owe a lot to George Lucas for like making my childhood great and my adulthood great because he made star wars he's kind of a pervy guy (laughs) yeah just it's just the the truth of it It is what Um, it is yeah but anyway uh so this one i I don't know i'm just i feel like it's kind of a cash grab like because they know feminism is a huge thing right now so they're like well instead of us like trying to make it to where the characters are equal um let's just make one that's just kind of hammer on the females. Well, um, uh, the thing that is weird about it for me, um, well, I made it uh, when we were talking off air or whatever you want to call it, when, yeah. because we're not really on air. Wh- whenever we weren't recording, but we were talking to each yeah, other. Yeah, that one. <laughs> um, so I kind of mentioned the like Carrie Fisher's passing. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if that has something to do with them like really diving into like the female characters on the show. Yeah. Um, I or on in also let me be clear real quick. I'm not mad or upset about this. I'm totally fine with it. Oh yeah, and I'm definitely gonna watch it. Like I'm not like oh they should put men in it. I'm sure there's gonna be male characters. Yeah, I don't don't even care. They're just front and center Um, is gonna be the female characters. Yeah, the thing that just seems weird about it is like the way they announce it. Like because like I loved whenever Rogue One happened and Episode Seven happened Mm because it was just kind of like here's the cast, or here's, you know, here's yeah. your posters, here's your main characters, here. and it wasn't just kind of like, and it's a girl. Yeah, they it's, like, it's a girl. Here, here's the movie, yeah. and, and uh, then everybody in the crowd was like, oh, it's a girl, and some of them were like, it's a girl! Yeah, which, <laughs> and screw those also, people. there's a black guy! Yeah. 
I don't like either of those do. things. Yeah, yeah screw you, screw you, you if yeah. that's who you are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah you, you, can, you can fuck right off. Yeah, that yeah. is that is 100% accurate. Yeah. You can just fuck right off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anyways. Um, yeah. It just, it feels a little bit. <laughs> ass pulley. I was going to yeah. say forced. <laughs> <laughs> Forces of destiny. He said forced. Yeah. I also, get it. Star Wars and the yeah, Force. Yeah. It's like it a pun on multiple yeah. levels. Yeah. Um, I, did, I, I wasn't intending to pun, which is why I paused. But uh, yeah. yeah, it feels a little bit forced because of how they're marketing it, of it being like, and it's all about the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I think it's great for like my. I have a daughter. I'm mm-hmm. sure she's gonna adore this show. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say is like, I wish they would have stuck with. It, it seems like they're going into 2D animation. Yeah. I don't mind 2D animation. I like 2D animation, but whenever it came to Star Wars, I really liked Clone Wars and Rebels animation. I thought the 3D worked really well. Right. Oh, and uh, the 3D animation in the prequels, because, you know, 90% <laughs> of those movies were 3D animated. That's where and I'm going to disagree on you. I did not like that. Yeah, movie. I didn't like it either. Um, <laughs> I like shit. Um, so, anyway. I think I just said disagree on you. Yeah, whatever. But, you know, I'm going to disagree all on over you. you. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so disagreeable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this got a little rapey. Yeah, this <laughs> this real got, gross. Yeah, this got weird. You can just fuck right off. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So you're anyway. the one trying to disagree on me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it just I don't know. Again, it it seems a little like they're hitting the nail a little too on the head. I guess like they're really just it's all about the women. I this feel is like for the women. Part of for it the is the women. And, and like part of me loves it in the sense of uh, you know there's gonna be people on the internet that, that are super pissed. I feel like part of it's a troll. Mm-hmm. I th- I do. I really do. I think I think a part yeah. of it is their marketing team going, you know. Fuck all those guys. Yeah, there's a lot of people right now bitching about the last two Star Wars movies having female characters. Yeah. Let's just kick them right in the tiny yeah, so, little balls. So part of me loves it. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna like, uh, but yeah, it does to an extent just seem like, uh, and it's marketing. It's yeah, basic marketing. Absolutely. I mean, like, they're just kind of like, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. Women's March happened last year, like everything going on politically. Yeah. I think it's very uh, wise marketing. Yeah. I, I really do. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if it works, it works. Yeah. Like, and at the end of the day, I'm going to watch the shit out of yeah, it. Yeah, same so, here. Like, I mean, from even Rebels, my favorite character in Rebels, I would say, is probably Sabine. And, yeah. You know, I've, like, Ezra is a cool character. Kanan's a cool character. Um, the only one I don't really like is Chopper the droid because he's, like, a little asshole droid. And part of me likes that about him, but then I'm also yeah. like, why are you such an asshole, Chopper? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got a... I'm going to have to ask him names mm-hmm. constantly because I'm terrible with Star Wars. Yes. Yeah. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, the Padawan from Clone Wars? Ashoka. One of my favorite characters. Yeah. Like, uh, she, at the beginning of Clone Wars, I hated her. Yeah. And then by the end of Clone Wars, I'm like, she is awesome now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she had the same she, transition. She kind of has that. a Skywalker arc. Yeah. Of being yeah, a whiny funny. little bitch. Yeah. Yeah, because they kind of wrote her as a Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. She's, She's being trained by Anakin. Yeah. So. yeah. I still, like, and they're doing things to fix it in the canon, but it still, like, seems weird to me that he had this paddle on the whole time, and then in the movies no one ever mentions her or anything like that. Yeah. Um, they're, like, in, because that, it takes place, like, before Revenge of the Sith, yeah. and Obi-Wan is never like, hey, remember that Padawan that you had? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. While you were still my Padawan, remember how weird that yeah. was? The Jedi do crazy things. Yeah. <laughs> things are about to fall apart, I think. Yeah. You're just, kind of like, <laughs> yeah. You're just like, I, I, I have a bad feeling. Right. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling, feeling about, about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that was like the big kind of reveal at uh, Star Wars Celebration. We still didn't hear anything about if they're going to do a uh, Obi Wan movie or Obi Wan trilogy, which is what I think ninety percent of Star Wars fans want. To be are, are people wanting one that takes place between uh, Episode three and four? Yeah, yeah, I think that would be great, yeah personally. Yeah, um, and they want like you and McGregor's already said he is on board if they want to do it. He's and like, he's I was the best call. part of the trilogy yeah. be- besides the guy you killed in the first or the two guys you killed in the first yeah. movie, like. Give me this. Yeah. I want this. And he'd be like the perfect age right now to mm-hmm. do it. Um, 
And so I, I don't know. Uh, so that they could show the hardest 18 years of anybody's yes. life yeah. ever. How we went from being 30 to 68 yeah. in, in 15 years or something. Yeah, 18, 16, yeah. something like that. I don't remember how old Luke was at the beginning of uh, 4. Uh, he's like 19 or is 20. 19? Oh, yeah. is he? I thought he was younger than that. I thought he was sixteen to eighteen or something. Uh, I'm. I yeah. might just be thinking. You would know. I might just happened. be thinking of the actor's age. Cause I know, oh, like yeah. Carrie Fisher was nineteen. Luke was right around. Or, oh, okay. Um, Mark Hamill was right around there. I don't know really because they never really say his age. Because it's also like it's one of those things. It's a sci-fi universe. They don't really go by Earth standard years. Yeah. So it's like he's sixteen in Tatooine years. Yeah. It takes, so he's it, 400 yeah, years old. It takes 362 <laughs> Earth years to orbit their sun once, though, so yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure, Yoda's 900 years old, but his planet it rotates once around the yeah. sun every day. So, <laughs> you know, like, it's it's that thing. He's 900 days old. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's a real young old man. Yeah. Um, so either way, excited about it. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm. Please, I'm, please go in the comments and tell me how it's terrible. And yeah, and how it's uh, white males are being destroyed. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. yeah the white genocide. <laughs> yeah, the white everybody genocide. keeps talking please about, tell me about you know, white male genocide. Yeah, yeah, we're still here and as alive as ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> There's not been a genocide. Yeah, no. Um, I don't think. That word means what everybody seems to think it means. <laughs> or at least a select group of very vocal people yeah. on the internet <laughs> um, seem to think it means. I would say the the main thing that worries me about this is that it jumps through all the different eras and stuff. And like they've already announced that one of the episodes is going to be about uh, Hera, the um, Twi'lek woman from Rebels, and Princess Leia going together on like some mission that involves the uh, Ewoks. Which, I don't care that they're together. Princess Leia made an appearance in Rebels already. That makes sense in the timeline, but it's just like... The thing they did after getting rid of the old extended universe was say everything that comes out now besides like the video games is canon. So I'm worried about it making the canon weird with them. Like just, hey, let's just jump and tell a story here. And let's just jump and tell a small story here. And you know. Yeah, and I think the problem with that to an extent like, is just Jen like... Jen Erso from Rogue One, the main character from Rogue One, is going to be a character in this that they follow through episodes. Yeah. So it's going to absolutely have to be before Rogue One. They had this thing with... Uh, they have Maz Kanata in it. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if they're going to go in like classic cartoon fashion of it's basically Maz Kanata just telling you all these tales. Yeah. I could see that working a lot. Right. Better. And then I hope that's what they yeah. honestly. And then you could even get away with some of the uh like canon breaking stuff because then it would just be like, Oh, she misremembered or misheard the story. Yeah, or you know, it's, it's a legend or yeah. you know. Um Yeah, because you could even have like a part where they tell it wrong and then have somebody else come in and be like it no, it happened like this, you yeah. crazy old, you know, lady yeah. or whatever. And, you and call that about it, yeah. <laughs> and They're trying to correct her, and she's just looking lovingly at Chewbacca. Yeah. She's like, oh, my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, and then goes right back <laughs> yeah. into the story. Yeah. So, I mean, like, there's ways to do it uh, that I think that it could work well, and I hope that's the way they go. It's like, there's a central character kind of telling all these tales, and I yeah. think Maz Kanata would be the perfect character for that. Yeah. Uh, also, like... I liked that character, and oh, we, yeah. we know from episode seven, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, and even, like, some stuff that was in the trailer before the movie came out, that her role in the movie got cut down a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Like, she was supposed to, after the whole scene where her castle basically gets blown apart, she was supposed to just travel with them from then on, and, like, there was a scene in the trailer where she hands the lightsaber to Leia and stuff like that. That all just got cut out. Um, so it's good to see that character still getting time yeah like and that's that's one of the best things about star wars as a franchise is that everything that you see on screen has a backstory like there's that uh the guy in the red helmet that's like in the background of that scene i think finn talks to for like three minutes has an entire book about him yeah Yeah, it's just like yeah that uh the there was like a female with weird makeup that has an entire book about her you know it's like stuff like that they were on screen for 13 seconds in the movie and they have a complete history. And that's one of the best things about the Star Wars universe is that it's, in the extended universe, it's so fleshed out. So I feel like they had to kind of do that on purpose, or like to an, or well, mm-hmm. they shouldn't say on purpose. I mean, like, obviously they did it on purpose. Yeah. Uh, I feel like they almost were forced into doing that, though, in the sense that, like, whenever you look at toy sales with Star yeah. Wars, 
people love the just like yeah random characters like anytime they can get just like a very strange character well, well even me one I of the at... best or one of the most popular action figures from the original trilogy was wicket the ewok and that's the one that uh warwick davis played in the original the main ewok in the movie but nowhere in the movie did they say his name no one was ever like hey that's wicket you know but oh, then, I didn't know that. yeah, and then the toy came out, and it's Wicket the Ewok, and then he had, and then they did like they had Ewok stories movies. about him, and yeah, exactly, and then he yeah. was the main character in those. Are those movies came into the Star Wars universe. They used to be. They're not anymore. Oh, really? Really? Oh, that's strange. So those the put, the oh, Christmas special. Did Lucas film put those out? I think so. Yeah, because they also had like I used to droid, watch the Ewok yeah. movies a ton, and I had the droids cartoon movies mm-hmm. that just followed like C three PO and R two around. Those were pretty good for, you know, whenever I was a little kid. Yeah. I probably would be really annoyed by them now as an adult. But yeah. Because I'm just kind of annoyed by C-3PO in general now as an adult. Um, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, so we so, just ranted for a while. Yeah. Congratulations. So, end of the day, yeah, this female-centric uh, animation. I'm not upset about it. I'm a little bit confused on the marketing, but I'm also not in marketing, so maybe it's a brilliant move, and I'm just like, that seems a little weird to me. I pay attention to marketing. It's a brilliant move. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Um, And um, I think that, I I really do think it's a brilliant move, and I I really, um, I'm excited about the show. Yeah, I think it looks interesting from what I've seen. um, Even though I think it is kind of an ass bowl, as I said. Like, I also, like, I think part of it is them trolling, so mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like, eh. Yeah. And with the and, and the with the last year, all the Star Wars uh, community have uh, with the most empowered female in Star Wars mm-hmm. up until Rey, probably. Yeah. Um, passing. passing away, yeah. yeah, I think that this is like a perfect, you know, a, a perfect thing to do. Yeah. In that sense. Now, uh, in the same realm, because it's within animation, um, they also announced at. Uh, celebration that season four of rebels will be the final season i have some opinions on this even though i haven't really seen rebels yeah you I, have my copy of the blu-rays for season yes, one and i've watched and half then, of it yeah and, but i watched half of it with my daughter so you can imagine how much harder it is to pay attention yeah um so anyways um i will say i'm glad they're ending it in the sense that, like, even though I haven't seen a lot of the show, so I don't mm-hmm. know where the story's going, so I'm hoping it doesn't feel forced that they're ending it. Um, and I know we're going to try and keep that one, like, kind of away from spoilers, like the discussion of it. Yeah, because I mean, it's like, still I don't going mind. on, and yeah. yeah. But, you know, just for the sake of being right. courteous. Uh, but if they slip out of his mouth, then sorry. Right. I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to talk too much about actual story points, but, um, Things that were said publicly, uh, Dave Filoni, who's the person who is writing it and directing it and everything, um, he is also who did Clone Wars. And at Celebration, whenever he made the announcement, he you know said it was his decision. He remembers with Clone Wars what it was like to not get to finish the story how you want to finish the story. And how it felt like it went on for forever. Yeah. Like, so, that's the part he should re- be remembering. Yeah. So, like, let's be real. They got to, they're at a good point right now where he can, they can wrap up the story, you know, because they know, bef- they knew before they ever started filming or recording anything for this that it was going to be the final season. So they can tie up all the loose ends they need to. They can get the story to where it needs to go without having to rush it. Um, so I think that is great. Like, I am really happy. That they're getting to do that. I think the thing that would be neat for like franchises like these, personally, mm-hmm. um, and I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent, not knowing a lot about Rebels, but I guess just Star Wars in general. Yeah. Um, because I don't like whenever something runs for too long and it's get, it gets overly convoluted. Yeah. Uh, there's certain shows I don't mind it with, like Supernatural. I've kind of like grown to like. There's seasons that kind of dip in and yeah. out and stuff, but like for the most well, part, well, that one that's a show they've been trying to end for like five years, and yeah. the fans will not let it. Happen. Yeah, um, but like for the most part, there's not like I will stick with a show, but mm-hmm. like whenever it comes to Star Wars specifically, I feel like 
it should end, and then if they want to, they can come back with, like, short little movies or mm-hmm. made-for-TV movies and stuff like that. If they ever, like, if they find loose ends they wanted to clear up or they find yeah. like, anything like that within the series, think about, oh, well, here's a made-for-TV movie about these characters that we can continue with, you know, yeah. and now, stuff like that. I'm going to make a prediction here. I want it to be so I can come oh, back look. later. <laughs> yeah, I want it to be so I can come back later and be like, see, I was right. Um, or I can delete the video if I'm wrong. Uh, no, I'm not gonna let me. <laughs> um, but I will re-upload it a thousand times. <laughs> um, what I think is going to happen. So first, touch on one more thing that was said publicly, which is, uh, this is going. This final season is going to tie in and show some of the stuff that we saw in Rogue One. Um, because it is in that time period. We did see in the Rogue One movie, like, the main ship, the ghost, that they fly around in in Rebels is in the battle at the end of Rogue One. Um, we see Chopper in the background. We hear somebody uh, over the intercom say, like, uh, General Syndulla come to whatever office or whatever, mm-hmm. which uh, Hera Syndulla is the Twi'lek lady from Rebels. So we know that they're there. So we're getting to see that story from that side. Um, so, uh, the, I mean, it's a huge prediction that everybody's making, which is a lot of these characters from Rebels aren't going to survive the end of this. Um, and I'm pretty on board with that. Uh, that's not the prediction I'm going to make, though. Because at uh, Star Wars Celebration, whenever he announced this, he was asked immediately by someone screaming in the crowd, like, well, what's next? And he did not say. He just said, hey, let's just kind of deal with this. You know, let it happen, and then we'll announce something. I think what's going to happen is, yeah, I do believe some of them are probably going to die. Namely, I would say the Jedi characters, because episode four starts, and there's no Jedi. Yeah. So so it wouldn't make sense to keep them alive. Uh, Something is going to happen. Um, But I do believe some of them will make it out, and then after this season airs, and they'll probably wait till the next celebration after that, they will announce a new series with some of the same characters, but it won't be Rebels anymore because that timeline will be over of the pre-episode four. And then they'll probably, I would say what I want to see them do is jump to either between episode five and six or jump to between six and seven because we have 30 years of history there with just nothing. Yeah. So, uh, I know that a lot of people in, in some of the comics are exploring between five and six, and there's a lot to go on there too, but I do kind of feel like by doing that, you're also giving yourself a, well, once we get to this point, we have to end. And if you go, yeah, let's go right after six, you have a good long time of telling stories before you have to worry about it running into more canon. Yeah. So... But that's what I think is going to happen. I think, and I think that specifically because they didn't announce what's coming next, is that they want to be like, well, we want to see how this plays out, and we don't want to be like, hey, here's what's coming next, and it involves Hera and Kanan, and you know, these are the ones that survived this series. Yeah. You know, I could see them going for between six and seven, mm-hmm. um, really easily, especially because like whenever they announced Rebels, the big deal about it was it was between four and. Or, or a three, be, yeah, between three, three and, and four. four. Um, so I could see them going, and I would actually be happier if they went between uh, four or five, and then five, six, and mm-hmm. then six, seven with shows. Yeah. Um, I think it's really ballsy to an extent to have uh, all these animations fitting within the canon. Yeah. As well. I mean, honestly, like whenever it comes to like, it's in the same vein of like, I guess what Marvel's doing with their movies and, and Netflix it, series. And, and, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, their animations, this is a lot different ball game. Right. Like, you know, it's just kind of like, so if you ever do try and bring any of those characters to life in actual, you know, you have mm-hmm. to make them look like a cartoon right. version. Of, you know, like you have to get them right to an extent. And it's like, animation is sometimes like very like simplistic with the design yeah. and stuff like well, that. Well, there's already been some stuff in Rebels that technically it's all canon now and I'm really annoyed by that. Like there's uh the characters of what are they called the inquisitors um which are kind of like the lightsaber wielding bad guys that aren't Sith. Mm-hmm. They're um, like what's your midichlorian count? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, that's what I assume. I no, that that's technically <laughs> that is midichlorians are still canon. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. I know. That's why I said it. I'm a dick. But no, they, there was a part because they have these like double bladed lightsabers that spin. I'm fine with that. But then in one episode, they go like this with them and fly while they're spinning. And oh. I'm like, oh, you made that cannon. Why? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, I can see that. I wouldn't be yeah. a big fan of that. Yeah. I'm not so. a big fan of that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, um, well, yeah. But the rest watch of, Rebels, Brandon. The rest of Rebels is fucking great, Rebels. man. It's so great. It is. The rest <laughs> of it's really fucking good. That one thing, though, which happens in one episode and then never again. It's probably after they did it like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Why did what, we do what this? do we do? Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that'll become another thing like midi-chlorians that, like, you saw once and then it just never gets discussed again. Yeah. <laughs> man. Yeah. Episode one through three could use a reshoot. Yeah. I don't care. Use, like, actual I know there's people out there sets that like, and you know, backgrounds and stuff. I know there's people out there that Get like Get some it. real sand. Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Anyways, yeah, yeah, so moving on uh, out of the animation news. Um, well, you want to take a, a quick ad break, and then we'll come back and talk about the Everything trailer. Else. Yeah, and then we're going to talk about uh, Rogue One in Episode Seven a bit because we never. Uh, yeah, that's right. We meant to start that way, and then we got distracted. We did. Yeah. So deal with it. That okay, was... ad break time. And we're back. <laughs> I did that. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Yeah. All right. So, anyways, Star Wars uh, Episode Eight. Yeah. Eight. Let's talk about eight. Let's go with eight first. Yeah. Um. So we got a trailer. Yeah. And there was paper in it. Yeah. Um. That's a big deal. Yeah. It's which there's a video we'll link to in the description that goes into like huge detailed reasons of why that's so important and yeah weird in Star yeah. Wars. Um. And we'll link to that. I believe it's by Inverse. Um. It's funny because you can see a lot of real world things happening like around mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Like, that that concept. Yeah. The of, concept of and it. Oh, we'll kind of paraphrase here, but uh. Like that kind of explains in Star Wars, like that there you never see anybody like write anything down. There's no like history books or anything like that. Kind of explains how in the span of thirty years something as insane as one man kind of toppling the entire huge empire by himself becomes a legend so quickly, like yeah, you know, gets kind of forgotten about, and they're like, oh no, Luke Skywalker is a myth. Because according to the internet. Global warming is not real. Right. And there's a lot of people that believe that. Yeah. So if we're going to, uh, we're, we'll go ahead and tie that to like a real world thing. Yeah. In 20 years, I mean, like, right. who With, knows what people will be thinking about? Like, you know, like, it's just. Yeah. Cause, I mean, Luke killed the Emperor. That doesn't mean that immediately from that second, the Empire wasn't in power. Yeah. Uh, they probably still control, like, the media and shit, and we're like, yeah, we're going to say yeah, that. Yeah, these terrorists. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, the, the terrorist group known as the Rebels, Yeah, you know, attacked and, you know, were beaten probably is what they said, and then like, but. But it, we lost a Death Star. Yeah, but you know, the but Emperor one. Palpatine died of a heart attack in his sleep peacefully. You yeah. know, like. Yeah. After. Saving a million kittens yeah, the day like before. Something yeah, something crazy yeah, like yeah. that. And, this is kind of like, yeah. Right before he bombs Syria. Right. Um, but, yeah, it, it is cool to see paper books in Star Wars because it also, as pointed out in that video, it means that they have to be really old. Yeah. Like, really crazy old because I'm not sure if... Well, I mean, if you look at even the movies in general, like, the first three mm -hmm. like episodes one through three um i should say um seem even more technologically advanced than yeah. after things kind of started getting right torn apart i mean like because even like the emperor or empire was mm -hmm. kind of like a little grittier yeah you know with technology because i mean taking power the rebels coming along like there it, it just things yeah. got grittier well it's another thing that gets said in the inverse video that we'll link to it like it is weird that it was 15 or so years between episode three and episode four and 
in episode three, uh, or episode, well, I, yeah, I would, episode three and episode four. It had to be like 18. Wasn't okay, it? somewhere like, it was yeah. not even 20 years. Yeah. Um, During episode two and three, and one, two, and three, really, Jedi are everywhere. Yeah. Like, there's a shitload of them. They are part of the government. Mm-hmm. And then in episode four, the Jedi are an ancient legend. Like an, yeah. They're an ancient order. Yeah. You know? Which always bothered me as a story. Yeah. Train. I mean, I still think, I, I will still, still complain about this. Yeah. Because and, the prequels, I'm sorry, are not good. Right. And like, I still complain about the prequels having, like, way more advanced technology mm-hmm. than the original trilogy. Um, and being bad movies. Yeah, just being bad, bad know. movies. Yeah. <laughs> Especially whenever you compare them to just how Star Wars was put together originally yeah. and how Star Wars has been done again recently. Like, they're yeah. obviously just not uh, on par films in comparison. I'm sorry, right. but, like, they're not. So, the rest of the trailer, though, because um, the paper book thing is cool, but it's not the whole thing. Um, uh, there was more to that trailer? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> so, the, I think the biggest thing in the trailer is Luke saying it's time for the Jedi to end. Yeah, that was exciting for. I think I called you, and that was the first thing I mm-hmm. mentioned because yeah. you and I were both just like the gray. Yeah, yeah. I, I want him to be a gray Jedi, yeah. or technically not even a Jedi. I want him to be a gray, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah, um, and I want that to be where he's leading Ray. Yeah, you like, can call it anything except midi chlorians. <laughs> We're, oh, you call it whatever you want. We're going to be the balance, the gray midi chlorians. <laughs> <laughs> the 50 50 midi chlorians. Yeah. Count. That's who we are. We're 50% that and 50% nothing. It's the dark yeah. side or something. I don't fucking know. That's stupid. Yeah. Who cares? But no, I, that's something I've wanted Luke to do forever in the Star Wars universe. And he kind of did in epi- or, uh, episode 6, I guess. Return of the Jedi. Yeah. And he would do force chokes. I mean, yeah, he was the, definitely... the first thing you see him do is choke a dude out yeah, with the force. That's definitely... not a light side maneuver. No, he's definitely like a gray Jedi. In yeah. That point. And like, it's funny because like... I'm going to go off on a bit of a oh, Go ahead. Okay. I'll drink beer. The reason it's funny to me, I guess, is because um, before that, it wasn't. But yeah. when that movie came out, that's just what a Jedi was. Yeah. That's just who he was. That's what he did. And that's just, yeah, kind of what it came down to being. Mm. Um, but after lore started pouring in and stuff like that, and, like, after, you know, it, it, it's now you can kind of go back and analyze it, and it's funny to analyze it because, like, Man, he was a gray Jedi. Yeah. But like at the time he was just a Jedi. Right, because you all know? that stuff hadn't built up around. Mm-hmm. And it's it's interesting, um because it it fits so well though, because like the whole time he's there to bring balance to the force and you know And with stuff. everybody else gone, how is he to know what a Jedi right. really is even at that point? Yeah. And that's kind of the thing, is uh he always did kind of play around with the dark side and you know so like that because he wasn't really trained properly he he is a skywalker he started yeah he started (laughs) to get trained by yoda and then he's like i'm gonna leave you know yeah (laughs) shit's going on and i gotta deal with it and yoda's like don't and he's like gonna yeah (laughs) so you know he never really got properly trained but at the end of the day he does fulfill the prophecy and he becomes he brings balance to the force and you know it's I, I'm kind of more surprised that in the new stuff, people don't look at Luke negatively for that. Because if you look at balance, it doesn't mean wiping out the bad. It means there being an equal amount of bad and good. Yeah. So he did that by just being like, yeah, all the all the bad's dead and then I'm leaving. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's, it's just something I've always wanted him to do and... In Star well, Wars, so I'm hoping that they do it right. I mean, I have seen a couple videos out online about, like, is Luke going to be more of a bad guy in this and mm. stuff like that, which I don't really, I don't think. I don't From a certain with. point of view. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, if you're, yeah. Um, if you're Kylo Ren, you might be like, that Luke Skywalker. Yeah, what a dick. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. So, it, it, it's, it's just funny to me because it's like, he's not, and the third, the one through three kind of screwed a lot of that up, I yeah. guess, to an extent, too. Uh, but, like, 
the way that Jedi were portrayed in one through three, I think was proper. Yeah. In the sense of like how they were portrayed, not necessarily having purple lightsabers. Right. Um, well, there's still a thing and it gets talked about in videos online a lot that, uh, of the two Jedi and Sith, Jedi seem to lie a whole lot more. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like they're just, they're trying to do good, but they go about it in all the wrong ways. Cause like they no they never had a parent that was like, honesty is the best policy. Yeah. They're like, no, lie so everybody thinks you're wonderful. Yeah. So, whereas the Sith, they lie, but then other times they're just like, no, I'm just going to tell you the flat out truth. Like, yeah. You know? And you don't seem to really get that very often from yeah. a Jedi. No. You get, well, from a certain point of view, your father did die. Yeah. And it's like, no, he just put on a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> like, you threw him in lava. Yeah. You cut all of his limbs off and left him burning on a... A lava beach. Yeah. <laughs> and then he yelled at him about his destiny. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you're kind of a dick. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, like, I, I completely understand if I were in Obi-Wan's position, I probably would have cut all his limbs off, too, whenever he dove at me with a laser sword. Yeah. If I had the ability to just be like, oh, all your limbs, I would have done it. But then I probably would have been like, I'm not just going to leave you here to burn to death. Yeah. It's one of the most horrible ways to die ever, and I'm, I'm apparently you, a good guy. Yeah, I'm going to take you home, get you robot legs, and you're going to sit in the goddamn corner yeah. for <laughs> I don't know how long to learn that the dark side yeah. is wrong. I'm going like, to take you home, and we're going to go to a special doctor who can remove your midichlorians, and you're just going to sit in a chair with no arms until you decide you're a good guy. Yeah. You can't use the force anymore either. Yeah. <laughs> and then maybe, maybe when you've proven that you're good... You can have the force back. Yeah. But right you now. You back your midi glory. Yeah. But right now, none. <laughs> like, I love how it's just like, the idea is like, here's your midi glory and milkshake, so now you can just have them back. <laughs> like, yeah. If only it was that easy. Yep. But yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited for episode eight. Um, and this is something like, we never really, on the podcast anyway, never really talked about how we felt about episode seven. There's a, it's. You know, dis- divisive online. There's a lot of people that hate it, and a lot of people that love it. And I'm one of the people that love it. I believe you are too. Yeah, yeah. Um, Except for the fact that it's a complete rehash of episode four, um, <laughs> which is kind of bullshit in my. Mind, yeah, but. I mean, if it's anything, it's a rehash of like the entire original trilogy, not yeah. just that one movie. It's it's weird be- um, because like, um, I you and I have talked about it a lot. Like, yeah. About all the homages that it pays to the original trilogy, not just epic. Yeah. Yes, I will admit, the base plot is very similar to episode four. Yeah. And if you take a movie for its base plot, then we have Smurfs in <sighs> space for, or, or uh, dances with Smurfs for, yeah. you know, as South Park said, for and Avatar. That one's getting you know. four <laughs> sequels. Yeah, so I mean, like that, that, that's the thing. Um, but like the end sequence, whenever it's uh, Kylo Ren versus Rey and Finn is there, mm. it all reminds me more of like the last sequence in Return of the Jedi, whenever it's Darth Vader and the Emperor. And, yeah, you know, it, it's it's much... just seen from the other side because it's yeah. two good guys fighting one bad guy instead yeah. of one good guy fighting two bad guys. Um, there, it's also you know that scene gets criticized a lot for like, well, how is Rey so good with the lightsaber? Blah blah blah. Kylo Ren one is toying with her. He's not taking it seriously because he's trying to convert her to his side, and you can't really do that if you murder a bitch. Um, yeah. He also got shot in the gut recently with a gun that we saw blowing people completely off their feet and doing backflips after getting hit with, and he was just like, "Ow!" And then he just like kept yeah, going. Yeah. Pretty sure he's using like most of his force powers to keep those insides inside instead of letting them like come out and fall in the snow. Yeah. Um, but you know. He's he's just getting overpowered by a weak little girl. Also, watch that fight scene again. She has no skill. She's just swinging wildly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, and and the thing is, like, also, she like a lot. Of the the biggest one I think I see online is like, how did she pull the lightsaber to her whenever you know it took Luke so long to figure out how to do it? Mm-hmm. And it's just like. The Force doesn't always... Yeah, as like, Han Solo said, that's not how the Force works. Yeah. Like, to the people criticizing it. Yeah, because the Force will work through you as it pleases yeah. to an extent. Yeah, exactly. Like, yes, you have control of, like... Yeah, that, it's the difference in the canon. This is in the novels and stuff that are canon. Mm-hmm. That 
The main difference between the Sith or the dark side users and the Jedi or light side users is that the Sith try to command and control the Force and the Jedi and the good guys let the Force control them. Yeah. So it wasn't Rey being so powerful in the Force. No, she it's, put her faith in it. Yeah, it's and Rey it being open to the Force and the Force being like, okay, yeah, this is what I want to do, you know? Yeah. So... Like, I can use you. Like, yeah. you know, and, that, and that's the thing that is crazy to me, just, like, that people... I, I feel like it's... And I'm not, like, the biggest Star Wars nerd, but, like, I try and pay attention to the the facts of the matter whenever yeah. it comes to the canon and how things operate. Right. Like, I'm not good with knowing every single character. I'm not good. Like, that's that's where you come in. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm pretty good at that. There's, yeah, you're much better at yeah. it than I am. But, like, whenever it comes to, like, how things work within the universe and, like, that is a big part of it for me is just, like, you're complaining about something that has been... Explained. explained. Yeah, yeah, explained, like, multiple times, for one. And for two, as you said... She didn't have control of that battle majority of it. Right. And for three, she has training. She knows how to fight. Yeah. Like, just because you don't know how, you've never had a laser sword before. Right. Doesn't mean that you haven't used a sword before. Yeah, or, or something staff similar. Before, we saw her beating or, the crap out of people earlier in the movie with that yeah. staff. And I understand that, like, everybody wants to think, oh, but it's a lightsaber. And it's like, yeah, yeah it's a laser Using sword. it at all means that you have, like, your master at martial arts. Like, no. She's yeah. just swinging wildly, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, I mean, didn't Finn pick it up? Yeah, and he kind of swings it like a baseball bat, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, like... Yeah. Come on. Like, it, it, live with inside the lore. If you're yeah. going to complain about stuff, get inside the lore and complain right. about it properly. Yeah. That's my main thing is, like, it's a, such a first world right. problem anyway. Well, it's the same thing with, like, people being like, Ray's just Luke again. It's like, well, Luke only wanted to leave. Ray just wants to stay where she is and wait. Like, that's a big difference right there, like, yeah. motivation-wise. Uh, Ray is completely by herself. Luke had people until they died, but, you know, there was, there was never really a time in Luke's life where he was alone. Get down to character-wise, who yeah. they actually are as people alone. Yeah. Like, Yeah, she, like, is a strong person, like, independent and willing to do things and luke was a whiny little bastard like, yeah for a lot of that film and then like even then he like after he stopped being a whiny little bastard he moved on to being like amazed and wondered yeah, yeah, yeah that's not a, a word uh, but uh <laughs> full i mean of wonder, it, it, yeah, yeah. It, it is a word but you know what i mean uh full of wonder mm. yes thank you um he that's who he kind of developed into and then like even whenever he got to Yoda, he kind of went back to, like, the whiny bitch phase to an yeah. extent. Like, and that, but my friends are in trouble! Yeah, and that's how <laughs> his character kind of developed and pushed through. Yeah. And, like, we don't really see that with Rey. Like, yeah. she's very tucked away with her emotions. She's right. very just... Yeah. She's a much harder person. Yeah, absolutely. Know? And uh, much more of a loner. And, like, even, like, whenever Finn came around, she was just kind of like, I don't know if I want anything to yeah. do with this person. Stop touching me yeah you know, it's just like pretty much so yeah. it's just like even down to like the characters and stuff and like yes if you look at a movie for its base plot and that's it yeah then like i can see the similarities yeah. there's well, tons of similarities and there are I good guys those. and bad guys and the bad guys have a big thing that needs destroyed and the good guys want to break it yeah okay, and they yeah. blew up some planets they blew up like three more planets yeah but i mean like or two more planets i guess but four how many planets did they blow up five <laughs> They blew up five, five in that movie, yeah. yeah. I don't remember. I did an actual analysis on that one day because somebody was just like, oh, the new ones weren't dark enough, and then I was just kind of like, here's the amount of people they killed in that, and actually, like, yeah. the, the math of if every planet had the, you know, yeah. the over seven billion people that we have. Yeah. Now, the thing that I will say, and I've said this to you before, is that, like, right now, I really love episode seven because it does such a great job of setting up for the future. Yeah. If that future sucks, it will completely change how I feel about seven. If eight is a pile of crap, I won't think so highly of seven. And that's one of the criticisms, criticisms I can understand from people right now is that episode seven, unlike episode four, isn't really a self-contained story. Like, yeah, it's definitely the first part of a trilogy. Now, why I don't 
think that that's a legitimate criticism or like why you should hate the movie is because one episode four didn't know it was going to be a trilogy. He yeah. thought it wasn't going to be successful, so he had to make it a self-contained, you know, oh, this is a movie yeah. by itself. Episode 7, they went into it knowing full well it was going to be a trilogy. Yeah. Like, so just the circumstances around the movie being made make it set up differently. Also, it's not 1977 anymore. Movies are just made differently now. Yeah. Another criticism I hear that's just completely stupid is people are like, well, I just, you know, I wanted to go back into it and see it like like I'd never seen Star Wars before. And you don't get to do that again. I'm sorry. Yeah, never. You, like, you saw Star like... Wars once for the first time. That's the last time you get to see Star Wars for the first time. I'm sorry. No amount of writing or directing or cinematography yeah. can ever change that. You get to see Star Wars for the first time once in your life unless... You have amnesia. That'd be like me going, <laughs> I've seen Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, like, I don't know, five to six times a piece, yeah. maybe more. And I just want to go into Super just knowing nothing, nothing about, about the universe. And, and just being like, this is fresh and new. Yeah. Just kinda like, you don't get to do that. Yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> like it's doesn't a, happen. It's an asinine thing to want. Yeah. Is to make have this movie make you forget that the other ones exist? Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> um, we are going to take another quick ad break, mainly because I have to use the restroom. So we're going to come back and I guess talk a little bit more about Seven or talk about Rogue One. Or yeah, let's. We got some more like kind of relevant. We'll talk about here. stuff. All right, stuff. We we'll ads. Back. Ads. I peed. Welcome back. And we're back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> he, yeah. it's funny. Um, Not as funny as poop. That's true. Poop is hilarious. Pretty funny. So, anyway, uh, yeah, so episode eight, from the little trailer we got, which, I mean, they're calling it a trailer. It, it's longer than a normal teaser would be, but it still kind of feels like a teaser to me. Yeah. Um, well, like, yeah, I feel like normal trailers are, like, five minutes long. Yeah. But, like, I also, Three like. five, somewhere in there. I feel like this trailer gave us a lot more than um, episode seven's trailer. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and I appreciate it. Yeah, I also, as of right now, feel like at least they didn't show me anything too much. Like yeah, like Rogue One, there was a trailer that showed them hugging in the explosion. Yeah. <laughs> like, kills them yeah so spoiler alert um if you haven't seen that yet uh sorry but yeah they, they die and you saw it in the trailer yeah <laughs> so you know you've seen it at least yeah I mean, yeah. which uh like that they're not by any means the first movie to do that no. i think we talked about this in the dc episode yeah. um ender's game is another movie that showed you like the final scene in the movie mm -hmm. uh in the trailer so i'm hoping I'm pretty sure I didn't see anything that was the final scene. Nothing looked like it could have been. I feel like Rogue One they gave away more. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason they also showed a lot more that like wasn't actually in the movie at all. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh, but I also think they gave away more because it didn't have the like it yes it had the Star Wars name to it, but it yeah. was like the first offshoot film. Yeah, it also like you know what's next anyway. Episode four is next. Yeah, so. It's not like they're like, but we don't want you to know what happens in the next movie. Yeah. I was like, no, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's that one with uh, with the Luke and the Skywalker and the yeah. Obi Wan, and, and the 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 kiss uh, the kiss from your sister on the cheek. Yeah, on the, the cheek in yeah. that one. Yeah, because yeah. the second one is when they get yeah, and then you get the <laughs> second one, and then it gets real raunchy. Yeah. And awkward later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love that meme that's going around that's like they cut the uh, her telling Han Solo that Luke's her brother. Oh, and the... then him like looking up and it cuts to them kissing. And yeah. then she kisses and the him and he like looks up again. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. one of the best memes I've ever seen. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, Anyway, so uh, moving forward. Carrie Fisher. Oh, yeah, we needed to talk about this before we got into Rogue One. Didn't yeah. We? yeah. Um, Carrie Fisher will be in episode nine. Wait, never mind. No, she won't. 
Um, is, she will be, and there will be no CGI involved. And then she will be, and there will be CGI involved. And now and she's she, not going to be there. Now she's not in episode nine at all. Yeah, which I don't know. So originally, what's going on. yeah, originally what happened was the her brother, uh, Carrie Fisher's brother, leaked that he was in talks with uh, Lucas Films and Marvel and Disney, whatever, because um, they're all one company now. Um, about getting the rights to use her likeness in episode nine, and then he lead like, "Yeah, we reached a deal. She'll be in episode nine with no CG." Um, and then something else came out, and it was like, "Oh, I didn't mean no CG. I meant like minimal CG, just like what would normally be in the movie or whatever." And then Kathleen Kennedy from Lucas Arts came out and said, uh, "No, she will not be in episode nine at all." but we will see a lot of her in episode eight. Um, now I'm wondering if maybe her brother just got confused. And he mixed up eight and nine. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. Either that or maybe it's like, you know, it, it was just user likeness. So maybe it's like they have a gravestone that has like a hologram of her or something. Yeah. You know, um, or maybe Kathleen Kennedy went, Oh, that uh, that is kind of spoiled that Princess Leia doesn't die in Episode Eight. Maybe we should backpedal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, and it's weird because like any of those options sound likely. Yeah, so it just kind of puts the fandom in a really weird spot. Yeah, and this um, isn't the first time they've like said things and then backpedaled. Like J.J. Uh, Abrams in Episode when Episode Seven came out, there he was like, Ray's parents are in the movie, and then he was like. Ray's parents are not in the movie. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Um, then Daisy Ridley was like, if you watch the movie, you know exactly who her and everybody else is like, no, we don't. Yeah. I still have a theory on that, and it just stems from the one line Maz Kanata says, which is... I think it's Luke. I think it's Luke. I think yeah. it's Luke. But Maz Kanata says, that lightsaber belonged to Luke and his father before him, yeah. and now it calls to you. I would also like it if Obi Wan had some kind of grand or daughter or mm -hmm. something, uh, yeah, a daughter, and then you know, yeah, even if they started like if they wanted to go back to Obi Wan trilogy and be like the first thing is him having a kid like yeah. right after, you know, so it's like maybe like two or three years younger than Luke or something right. like that. So it's yeah, I think that would be great. yeah. Um, um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. With right, it. yeah, but no, it's it's weird, um, but it's kind of par for the course for, like, leaked information for movies is it gets leaked and then someone denies it. You know, yeah. the same thing happened with Ghost in the Shell. Uh, it leaked that they were doing tests to make <laughs> Scarlett Johansson look I more will Asian. never play a Japanese girl. Yeah. I'm a Japanese girl. <laughs> yeah. they, it leaked that they were trying to do CG tests to make her look more Asian, and then DreamWorks was like, we never did that. Yeah. And then a, a little bit later, they were like, well, we did that, but not with Scarlett Johansson. We tried to make some of the background actors look more Asian. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. stuff like that. So, you know, you, you can never believe anybody. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. So that's, I mean, real quick, that's all we had to touch on on that, really. Um Let's see. Rogue... How, well, well, before we get into Rogue One, what are your feelings on it? Do you think that Carrie Fisher, if they don't have any scenes filmed, should they, like, try I do and... not want to see another CGI Carrie Fisher monster like we had in Rogue One. And yeah. I'm sorry to those of you who thought it looked good. Get your eyes checked. It did not look good. I didn't think um, that... She looked better than Tarkin. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, what I was going to say. And I will say... Now I own the movie, can watch it at home on my much smaller TV, which it's still decent size. It's 65 inch. It doesn't look nearly as bad as it looked 30 feet tall. Yeah. You know, um, there's still like things about how Tarkin moved and especially like his clothes, you know, just they look rubbery instead of like they're made out of I mean, his skin to an extent. Yeah. Does too. I mean, um, and that's the thing, like, I, um, his okay. eyes. Yeah, the I eyes. guess we're just kind of getting into Rogue One complaining See? territory. Yeah. Um, which, well, we're, we're, but, yeah. Well, the point is, I don't... If they're going to do her full CG, fuck no. Yeah. Ride her out of the script. I don't care if I don't get to see her die. In fact, I kind of don't want to have to see her die. You know? that's Like, you can just tell me it happened. I don't want to cry. 
So you don't have to make me watch. Depending on how it happens in episode eight, mm-hmm. I think a great sequence for the beginning of episode seven would or nine. Thank you. Um, the episode nine would be if they did CGI her, but they did it where she was a hologram mm-hmm. talking to ha or talking right. to uh, like Kylo Ren even mm-hmm. like you know just kind of like talking to her son like he's re- watching a holocron of her or something. Yeah, yeah and then like her telling her like this is my last chance to tell you but like I you know or basically say I love you I you know that actually you know, brings like, up something that I like can, something like that yeah. and then have her ship explode and that could be like a big thing for yeah. Kylo Ren you know that kind of brings up something that I want to talk about a little bit too which is there's a lot of stuff in the extended universe uh in the novels and rebels and stuff like that that it's part of the world, it's a well-established part of the world, but we never see in the movies, and one of those things is holocrons, like Jedi holocrons. Mm-hmm. Why? Bring those in, they're cool. We don't ever see a vibroblade. They're in the lore everywhere, they're in the extended universe and novels and stuff everywhere. It's a, mm. you know, normal sword that can stop a lightsaber. You would think more people would have them whenever, like, especially the entire purpose of the First Order is to hunt down the most powerful Jedi ever. You'd think that they'd yeah. be equipped with something like that. We got that weird little baton thing, which was awesome, but, like, why don't we see more of the stuff that's in the extended universe in the actual movies? Yeah, I think that's, like, kind of a problem with the extended universe in general. It's just, like, because, like, people are writing separate times, Mm -hmm. separate things, and it's just kind of like, yes, that's clear, okay, but we're not, like, they're not thinking to, like, okay, that's clear for that, we need to bring it into this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, no, it's fine, it can exist, that's fine. We looked over everything canon checks out but whenever they go to the other thing they just look over it and they go yes that's also fine right and checks out they don't go hey but these guys over here had this thing you should use and then by the time it's out and we might see more of a a mixture of everything Mm -hmm. as time goes on i feel but like right now especially with everything being new canon yeah basically i think we're in a a a situation where it's just going to continue to be like that right uh, so back to the Carrie Fisher thing. Yeah, if it's if it's full CG, I don't want it. I could deal with the hologram thing, and that's something I even said about Rogue One. Like, I feel like a lot of Tarkin's like all of Tarkin's sound like yeah. falling off. Whoa. <laughs> Pretty much all of Tarkin's scenes could have just been done as him as a hologram talking to uh, like all Krennic. Yeah, there's not a scene in that movie that I yeah, because he never like hits anybody or anything. Yeah, or He's he just... never has any action sequences yeah. or anything like that. There's not a scene in that movie, I don't care what you say, that he could not have just been a hologram. Right. Movie. And it would have been way less noticeable. Oh, it would look, it'd probably would look great. Yeah, honestly. probably. Um, so, yeah, if they do that with her, then I'd be okay with it. Because, uh, like, Snoke, I couldn't really. I mean, like, he was, yeah. CG, or he was a hologram the whole time. I'm just like, man, I am not excited to see him as a full on CGI character yeah. in this movie um, or in this franchise because he looked fine as a hologram. Right. Like, it looked. Like if you made a hologram, you know, like yeah. just like um, that just seems to work really well with their CGI yeah. characters. I'd be much more on board if they just had already shot scenes for nine or had footage that they shot for eight that could work well in nine. Um, yeah. I'd be fine with that. But what I want to see and what I hope happens is that she gets killed off in eight. Um, mm-hmm. Part of that is for selfish reasons. I think if they kill Han Solo off in one and they kill Leia off in two of the trilogy. You get Luke for one more movie. I either get Luke for one more movie or maybe they're like, you know what? Maybe we just shouldn't kill the entire original trilogy. And then they just don't kill Luke. Yeah. Um, in fact, I, I talked to one of my other friends about this before where what I actually want to have happen is I don't want to see Luke die in this trilogy. And I want the next trilogy to start, you know, 10 or 15 years down the line or whatever in the story not in our time. I don't want to have to wait another 15 years after that for another trilogy. But uh, in the story, I wanted to be like 15 years later and no one knows what happened to Luke. It's kind of a mystery if he's still alive or not. And there's all these legends surrounding him and stuff because that kind of fits the lore mm-hmm. of Star Wars, especially like going back to the you never see paper or anything. It's like, yeah, he, he just, he came back, he helped with this and now everybody's like, do you think if something else happens, he'll just show up again? You know, yeah. like... Or even have him take, like, an Obi-Wan approach and actually have, like, yes, he's training Rey right now, yeah. but, like, have him be that crazy old man in the woods. Like, right. Yes, he's doing the similar, yeah. but, like, have him, like, 
just straight homage to exactly yeah. that. Like, even well, they could like, even have it be like the next trilogy starts, and it's like the first movie, it's just whispers of Luke. You know, did yeah. he die after that? Where did he go? You know, is he in hiding again? Yeah. Whatever. Second I mean, movie. Shit, have him be a Sith. Have him be the bad guy. Yeah. Even, like, would be cool. Cause, yeah. Like, the Star Killer and the Star. Uh, Skywalker line is always supposed to be in that constant yeah. struggle. But I then, honestly thought they were going to have him be the villain in yeah. these, but they didn't. But then in the second movie, they could have, uh, you know, either keep up with that lore thing and maybe then find a little bit more, like, hard clues of, like, no, we found that he escaped that explosion or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then in episode, like, I guess it would be 9, 10, 12, mm -hmm. actually have him show up again if he's still alive. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and just be like, yeah. He's here, super old man. He's kind of a Yoda. He's not going to be fighting nobody, yeah. you know. But that'd be cool. Yeah, like I'd be way more okay with that. Plus, like there, there's this thing that happened whenever Han Solo died, and that's now in my head. Han Solo is a dead guy. Mm -hmm. Before that movie, whenever I thought of Han Solo, he's always alive. You yeah. know, I don't want to have that feeling of Luke. Like, yeah, I I want to always think of Luke as being a somebody who's still alive. So that's just me being a fanboy, of course, but. It's what I want. <laughs> I would be happy if they... I was actually surprised they didn't make him into a villain. Honestly, Luke. Just because, like, that's the lore. Yeah. And it's extended I think that's, universe stuff. I think that's, that's exactly why, why they're not doing it, is because they don't want it to just be like, oh, and then we just did the thing we made not canon. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. they they wanted... Because that's one of the things, like, that recently there was an article that was like, did Luke Scott... Or did Mark Hamill spoil uh, episode eight back in 1978? And it's like, no. <laughs> like, yeah. No, he didn't. It's, yeah. it, it, he said what him and George Lucas talked about maybe happening in the future. George Lucas isn't writing episode eight. Yeah. It's a completely different story now. He didn't spoil it. Yeah. Um, and either way, just I'm along for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I guess we'll get into Rogue One to finish things off. Uh, well, we got a couple things. So Rogue One's gonna be real quick it's just uh i'm confused because it's getting a sequel novel oh is, yeah which yeah, is I about this. also yeah. a tie into battlefront um two battlefront two yes mm -hmm. but how is it a sequel to rogue one if it have you seen rogue one if you have they all die yeah um so it's obviously not gonna follow any of the main characters yeah I mean, maybe somebody repairs K2SO, and if so, yes. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Yeah, repair K2SO. Follow yeah. him. I'm Why don't they board. just pull his his consciousness into the cloud and gave him a new body? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They just pulled that little chip out of his head and yeah. put it in another one. Um, or just take his head off, because he didn't really get shot in the head and just put yeah, it on another body. Yeah. I mean, we saw C3PO. I mean, the entire planet gets... Whatever. Yeah. For Mark. Cool. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just, I'm confused. Uh, I guess it'll follow one of the like weird side characters that we didn't see die. Yeah. And I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Um, I guess if it follows, cause it is a battlefield two tie in and the trailers for battlefield two look like they follow the empire characters more or the first order or whatever you, they are. Um, I'm not sure. They look like stormtroopers. Yeah, I feel like they are just using the term Rogue One sequel for marketing value. Yeah. At the end of the day. So like, maybe it's following is... somebody that we saw on the Empire side and this yeah, still somehow it, like, a sequel. It almost has to. Right. Like, that's the thing that's weird about it. Um. Yeah, so, I don't know. I'm just confused about that. If you understand it, let us know in the comments section. Oh, yeah, we have Explain it to us. Yeah, thanks. Um. That'd be cool. So, okay, the other things, though, because that's really all the Rogue One stuff. Um, oh, well, do you want to talk about actual Rogue One, oh, the movie? I guess we'll be quick about it. Um, Is there something else we need to get to? Yeah. Episode 9, um, Ryan. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll do that. It'll be quicker, actually. Yeah, do that first, and okay. we'll talk about Rogue One. Ryan we Johnson, will talk about Rogue yeah, One. Ryan Johnson, the director of uh, Episode 8, has confirmed that he has absolutely nothing to do with the story or plot of episode nine yeah which is weird because abrams had like a lot of involvement with eight I yeah believe. and in fact i remember them saying that like they had to make changes from what ryan johnson wanted to do because jj abrams said like no mm -hmm. he said you can't do that 
And it makes me wonder if J.J. Abrams was doing that with all three films. Yeah, which I or, haven't seen any information yeah, on. Yeah, and that's why Ryan Johnson isn't, but, like, at the same time, it's a little worrisome. I mean, yeah. Like you said. Yeah, it, it, it worries me because if he has no involvement, then the story could just go completely off the rails from what was planned. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, that bothers me whenever you're trying to follow But Iron Man 3 story. was great. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, those and X-Men, Last Stand was awesome. Yeah, those X-Men, X-Men Last movies Stand that great. didn't have Brian Singer involved. Yeah, those are awesome. Uh, yeah, no, it, that, it, it worries me that he has no involvement. Yeah. Like, I don't expect him to come back and write it and direct it because... They, well, we the writer... He wasn't. Was he the writer for eight? He wrote eight, I believe, like, J.J. Abrams helped, and I think Lawrence Kat, or Lawrence Kasdan is still helping. Yeah. I'll have to look into that. I could be wrong. I hope he's still around. That's yeah. the main, like, that's probably the most important, yeah. I would say. Um, also, on that same topic, uh, in an interview, Mark Hamill said that he fundamentally disagrees with all the, the decisions Ryan Johnson has made about his character. Um, oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, I mean, it's also Mark Hamill, which in another interview, Mark Hamill has said, yeah, I lie all the time. So, you know. He's such a weird dude. Yeah. He is. I, I love him. Yeah. But he's such a weird guy, and you can't really trust anything he says. Yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of his. Yeah, me but, too. But man, he's such a weird dude. Yeah. So. so Anyways, that's a little concerning, I guess. Is, yeah, that's, you know? I mean, I don't know. We'll have to see. Like, we have we still have to see 8 before we can really worry too much about yeah. 9. 8 could just suck super hard, and then I won't care about 9 anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is. Or it is, eight could be the weakest of the three. It, right. it might not be terrible, but not, yeah. it might be great, and that's why they took it. Yeah, them it's off. it's definitely supposed to have like a darker tone to it, and you know, it from everything I've read, it it is a completely different take on Star Wars. Which, uh, if we're gonna go that route, let's go into Rogue One, which had a much darker yeah. tone. Or, which, real quick, before well, Rogue One, because darker. let's just keep pushing it off for a second. I am looking forward because of <laughs> yeah. I am looking forward because they're saying it's a completely different take on Star Wars. I am looking forward to seeing all the people that were online when Episode Seven came out that were like, it's too much like the old ones. I'm really looking forward to those exact same people being like, this is too different from the old ones. Yeah. Because you know it's going to happen. Yeah. So anyway, now Rogue One. Um, so yeah, uh, Rogue One was definitely, uh, I would say, a darker film. Uh, definitely in context. Yeah. Towards the end, it was definitely darker. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, like, and that Vader sequence alone yeah. is dark. Well, that and, like, we see, uh, what's his name, Baze, the uh, the blind guy's buddy with the huge gun. Just, like, walk up and point blank blast a dude in the face. Yeah. You know? I mean, he still is wearing a helmet. And so right, it's not but like still, you see, like, no, like yeah. Like, Gore doesn't come out, but yeah. it's point blank shooting a dude in the face. Yeah, <laughs> like, um, but like it the, still has a really meaty thunk noise to it. Yeah, so. the thing that I will say though is like, I don't agree with the people that over or were overblowing how much darker it was than the original Star Wars. Yeah. Um, Again, or, like you see it, entire planets get destroyed, those millions of people. Yeah, and <laughs> it's just not only that; it's just like it. it the other Star Wars films do have dark... I mean, like, look at everything that happens in Seven. I mean, yeah. like, Kylo Ren killing his dad and all this stuff. Like, because, like, whenever Luke kills Darth Vader, mm-hmm. I guess if you want to even put it that way, he just leaves him to die. He yeah. doesn't kill him, and there's, like, a moment of their bonding and the moment yeah. of, like, you know, understanding and being able to move on. And then, but, like, whenever it comes to Kylo Ren, he's just like, hey, what's up, dude? And yeah. stabs him. He's like, I gotta gotcha. do Gotcha! I gotta do this, Dad! Yeah. And then just stabs him, you know? You never understood me! Yeah. I need you to help me! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna, you know. It's the worst way to help your kid with their homework. Yeah. My huh? teacher wants me to do this, but I don't get it! <laughs> I guess it got him out of helping his kid yeah, with his homework, so. in a sense. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, I mean, like... I don't 100% agree with, like, the the idea that it's just, like, it's vastly different. Yeah, like, I, like... I don't think that it's, like, darker, per se. I am kind of surprised it got away with a PG-13 because of, like, one, the way it ends, and, mm-hmm. like, you do see good guys just shoot people in the back. Yeah. You see good guys shoot people in the face, yeah. you know. And it's stuff like, yeah, you don't see blood, but 
the context is definitely gone. yeah exactly like i will agree um, with that so like i i mean it's it was one of the few movies that i came out of and i was like i think that needed to be harder than a pg-13 but not quite an r there needs to be something like in the middle of that <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know, because, like, the movie's context was what was dark to me. Yeah. It wasn't, like, like even the actions, I guess, were, like, are they really bad? Like, people, right, people well, and, like, Rebels. Or, Rebels has a lot of stuff. It's on Disney. Yeah. Either side of this war. Right. You know, it's just, like, it's not really, I mean, yes, it looks... Darker yeah. because it's newer. And it's, you know, like, right. I think that has a lot to do with it, but like. Yeah, well, seven, again, that's why I think it needs. Stuff. It's. I feel like there should be a rating between PG 13 and R because. Like, it's the same thing with, like, there's a PG 13 version of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. And yeah, it doesn't have gore and stuff, but you still see all the killing. And mm -hmm. then R is, like, super gory. But, like, yeah, you're still seeing the same amount. Like, seven kids die. You know? Yeah. Same amount of kids dying, but it's the way they're shown. And, like, yeah, you see people get shot and die in Star Wars, but, like, you don't ever see a good guy just shoot his buddy in the back, and you do see that in Rogue One. Yeah. Um, you don't see a guy just walk up to a guy who's helpless on the ground at that point and just blast him in the face. Yeah. You know, and it is, it's not, I don't think it's rated R-worthy, but I kind of feel like they could be higher than a PG-13. Yeah, I am indifferent um, on that. Yeah. And, like, I will say that, like, a lot of like also violence, the rating even, systems just complete BS. Anyway. Yeah, even so. the violence in seven, mm -hmm. if we want to bring it around to that, is really funny to me because it's like, um, yes, the Han Solo part is dark. Yes, yeah. the fight between uh, Ray and uh, Kylo, Kylo Ren. Ren and Finn is dark. But like, you get to like, you also have sequences where it's. Uh, Chewie and Han like shooting the fucking yeah you know, back the, yeah and then yeah. they're just like wow I didn't know that thing was that strong let yeah. me take a shot at it and it just kind of like is very comical yeah like, even in the very well violent. and then even like I think episode four was PG mm -hmm. and Obi Wan cuts off a dude's arm in a bar and you see it fall in blood gush out mm -hmm. you know <laughs> like yeah the things are just yeah, PG <laughs> yeah so. So, but yeah, overall, Rogue One, I yeah. was a big fan of besides Tarkin. Yeah. Like, that was the biggest thing. Overall, the movie itself, I really enjoy. There's parts within it. Tarkin bothers me. Uh, CG Leia also, but not as much. And I think it's mainly because she has less screen time. I also feel like they could have just shown her from the back and it would have been perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you didn't have to have that uncanny valley of her face right. or anything like that. We like, would have known who it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh... So that bothers me. The mind reading octopus monster. I don't have a problem with weird, crazy aliens in Star Wars. I enjoy them. I actually, I'm one of the few people that doesn't mind the Wrath Stars in Episode 7, the ball things. Mm -hmm. A lot of people hate those. I don't have a problem. I don't understand the purpose of it in Episode, or in Rogue One. It doesn't really do anything. Like, there's no real reason for it to be there. It's just kind of there to be scary. It's there to be scary and to, like, make that guy crazy for 13 seconds whenever it doesn't it doesn't affect anything. Yeah. You know? They're yeah. like, hey, are you the pilot? And he's like, I know. I know and they're like, are you the pilot? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm the pilot. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. that's all it does. It's, it's more to show, I guess, Saul Guerrero being crazy to people. But you could have done that so many other ways. Yeah. And just be like, I got this slimy slug monster thing. Yeah. Look how crazy I am. In all the trailers, I had hair, but now I'm bald. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> um, yeah. It's pretty nuts. Yeah, <laughs> but, is, yeah. It's a scary world we live in. Yeah. <laughs> or they live in a long time ago. Yeah, so like yeah. that bothered me. And there were a couple of parts where I think it's like the music. I could tell, like, yeah, it really wants you to believe that it's John Williams, but it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the beginning. Um, whenever I never, like, I didn't honestly pay that. Well, it's they do the a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and the music does that, da, da, and then just like no scroll <laughs> into movie. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, you should not have let in with it sounding like we were about to get a scroll. <laughs> like, yeah. That was just a way to just like sh kick me in the face of not getting a scroll. Yeah. No, thank you. Get back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
because I kind of have a problem with it not having a scroll anyway, because arguably of all of the Star Wars movies besides probably episode four, whenever you first see it in 1977, and there was no other Star Wars, this movie probably needs a scroll more than any other one. Yeah. To set up these characters and stuff. Like, all that stuff at the beginning, that, like, good 15 minutes of just two people talking in a field, could have been a one minute and a half scroll. Yeah. You know? I can agree with that. Yeah. So... Um, Besides that, I, I mean, I enjoyed the heck yeah. out of the film for the most part. Mainly the death or the Darth Vader scene. Yeah, the Darth Vader scene is. If you haven't phenomenal. seen the movie, go watch the movie just for that scene. Yeah, like, skip to the last five minutes. Yeah, like, just, just watch that. Um, so. yeah, but that Darth Vader scene—it's the best Darth Vader scene in anything. That's happened. Um, that yeah, that we've seen, especially in live action. Uh, there's some pretty cool scenes in Rebels with him. Um, one, like. I'm glad they're, like, taking that character and just, like, showing why everybody's scared of him. Yeah, and that that's where I was actually kind of going. Is like, that's... We got to see the Darth Vader that everybody talks about in Star Wars. It's like, all the characters are like, that's Darth Vader, you know? Yeah. You don't mess with Darth Vader, but you never really see why, except for every now and then he chokes a dude. Yeah. You know? But then you see him just, like, go down a hallway... And some and, people are just into that. Yeah. Go down a hallway and annihilate everybody. Yeah. And, and like, amazing. that's why we're scared of Darth Vader. Yeah. Okay, makes sense in, now. Thank in, you. Uh, in season one of Rebels, I think the only other thing, like, or it might be the very beginning of season two, I can't remember now. Um, it might be the only other thing that rivals that Vader on screen thing for me is you see him fight both Kanan and Ezra at the same time. And you can just tell the whole time that he's like, this is nothing. These guys are yeah. so poorly trained. I don't even have to do nothing. Yeah. You know, it's just like, that's the Vader I want to see. Where he's just like, I am so crazy powerful. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I have to urinate again. Okay, well. So we're going to end the episode. Yeah, we're just going to end the episode. <sighs> There's nothing really else that yeah. we wanted to get out of our so, chest. Yeah, in summary. Oh, one last thing. I do not want to see a Han Solo standalone movie. Oh, yeah, me neither. So... See you later. Bye.